Yeah, absolutely. So now let's, I think we have Rich Paul now. Uh, Rich, are you with us? I sure am. Excellent. Hey, Rich. Rich. Yeah, how are you doing, Rich? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it's, it's hard to complain to a guy in jail. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's exactly. <laughs> Rich, of course, is a former is a has been a co-host of Free Talk Live in the past, but right now he's of course calling us from the Keen Spiritual Retreat, right? Uh, yep, I'm still in jail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. Um, so, Rich, what did you want to talk about? I, I, it's we're, we're honored that you're listening to us, uh, certainly, because I mean I know you're not in like the best place on planet Earth, right? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I, I really enjoyed listening to you last night, but I thought that the uh, I, I was listening via FM. That's the night that we can do that. Um, but I thought that Rothbard was completely wrong on what? his quote about children and the market for children because he was treating children as if they were property. Okay, so Rothbard was wrong about children because he was treating children as yeah. if they were property. You're going to have to bring who, everybody Roth- up to date on yeah, this one who's first. who's Rothbard and what did he say and... What was the conversation last night? Okay, well, y'all had, a, uh, had some quotes. It was actually a, it sounded like a critic of libertarianism. Uh, Salon.com. Yep. Um, I was saying, uh, talking about um, uh, having a market for selling children and saying that um, one could... Uh, could fail to feed children, and that that would be uh, legally okay under under a libertarian system. Um, and I've always disagreed with with Rothbard on that because when when you talk about selling children, you can only sell something. That is property. We did um, talk about I this. Um, uh, you know, we, we talked about. I don't know the the, Roth, the Rothbard piece didn't specifically talk about kids as uh, uh, you know selling kids, you know selling babies. But mm-hmm. what we do see today is we see people who we see a demand in the market for children, right? Um, mm-hmm. We see that people want them, and we see mm-hmm. that uh, specifically. Um, you know, mothers who can provide babies. I'm not talking about kids that are a certain age. Um, you know, there's too many of the, uh, there's too many of them out there, and they need great homes. And I wish they had them. But babies, mm-hmm. specifically white babies, people are willing to you know give a scholarship. And this is just terminology that they use essentially to mm-hmm. give young mothers money to have kids for them. Mm-hmm. Well, the reason that, that I object to the terminology is, is obviously there's nothing wrong with paying the mother and adopting her child under under libertarianism. The reason that I would not call that a fail is because it's treating the child as if the child was... The parent-child relationship is not ownership. Yeah, um, I agree. It's, it's I, think it's, I think it's stewardship. The parent-child relationship is more like a trusteeship. Yeah, exactly. A child, like every human, owns himself, but is incompetent for the moment of carrying out his responsibilities as owner. And therefore, the parent is carrying out those responsibilities for him and is able to do things like you were talking about restraining the child on the, on the changing table and, and that being initiation of force. And it's not initiation of force because while that child is is um, incompetent, you are carrying out his responsibilities as owner of himself for him. Well, you know, I think that what's um, difficult about that is is that it's you know who decides competence. If I'm deciding competence, I would concur with you that a you know a one-year-old is not competent to decide who's in charge and who's not. But Here's the music. I can assure you that the state doesn't think you're competent either, and that's why they put you in jail. Um, but let's go ahead. We're, we're actually we're talking uh, to Rich, and he is uh, debating one of the really one of the libertarian luminaries, perhaps the biggest of all time, uh, arguably, and that is uh, Murray Rothbard and his opinion on uh, children, and that they he kind of sees them as property. And now this is he's not really... actually debating Rothbard because Murray's dead. 
Right. But uh, he's, he's debating, debating the ideology of, of Rothbard. And uh, Rich, are you are you back with us? Well, yeah, sure. Uh, excellent. Okay. So we were talking about how the, the fact that, you know, you feel that a parent, and I totally agree with you on this, Rich, that parents, or proper parenting is stewardship, not ownership. It's like a trusteeship, I, I believe is the word you used, Rich. And I really, I, I totally agree with you on that. Um, but Rothbard often talked about children more as being, uh, as being property. Uh, now, you know, I got to say, Rich, I'm, I'm very much with you on this because I think it's very, it's odd that the way we describe ourselves, the way we describe property in general is by saying, well, it all comes from the fact that we own ourselves, but then we're really calling ourselves property in that way. So I don't find it, I don't find it shocking that people have no problem seeing children uh, as property, but you were getting into the finer point, and I want to hear your rebut uh, to, to Rothbard's ideology about the fact that holding a kid down while wiping its butt is somehow, you know, an aggression against them. Do you, so, do you want to talk more about that, Rich? Uh, yeah. Well, my answer would be: I mean, first off, we can we can look at something that I think we'd all agree upon, which is um, when my girlfriend was dying of cancer, once she'd lapsed into a coma. I was her caregiver, and I was charged at her request with making medical decisions for her. Right. So, and this gets into your saying: Can you put a child down who is sick? Can Can you uh, Can you basically put them to sleep like you would like you would a dog? And I would say that I should have had the right at that time, although under current law, I don't. To say, okay, Julie is, is suffering. She's clearly not going to recover. Let's let's euthanize her. And I believe that I should have had that right, um, because she basically granted me that right explicitly. Now that doesn't happen with children, because children aren't able to understand or grasp or actually grant that right explicitly. So I think we have to assume, in the case of a newborn that the parent starts out with kind of an implicit trusteeship, um, but that the, the parent is required to exercise that trusteeship in a way that is at least arguably in the best interest of the child. So right yeah, now, a, par a parent example. can, if a baby, it, let's say an infant is like really not doing well, is on a ventilator or whatever, is on life support, they the can remove them from can life support. Remove them from life support, right? But it's only when it gets to that extreme where it's but like considered acceptable. To... Euthanasia is something a little different than mm -hmm. that. Humans yeah. are very, uh, very resilient creatures. Uh, um, I mean, we yeah. we survive, mm. and uh, that's you know, that <laughs> as opposed to taking us off life support. There's another step where if somebody's in terrible pain or. Uh, you know, not going to live long or something, uh, you know, they may choose to euthanize themselves. Now, this is legal in many countries around the world, and I think like Oregon or Washington. It's or also illegal. It's also legal to abort a fetus because you found out that they have Down syndrome or something. It certainly is. It's legal to abort a fetus for any reason at all. Right. And, and Because you just don't want it. Right. Yeah. Rich, your Down thoughts? Sy Down syndrome is one of those thoughts. Rich? Um, yes. Yeah, go, go ahead. Well, the point in me saying that, well, the reason I brought those cases up is that in some cases, people do consider it socially acceptable or whatever, or morally acceptable to terminate the life of a very young human being, like a fetus or an infant. Um, and it just, at some point, you know, it becomes unacceptable to them. And it, to a certain extent, you could make the argument that it's a little bit arbitrary at what age and under what circumstances it becomes kind of a slippery slope of when it, when is it okay? Yeah. Rich, yeah, do you have any thoughts I would on that? Say that? Once a child is born, that you know, although if if the child was terminally ill or or severely ill, it might be okay to in, if it was in pain, but it might well be in, be okay to euthanize it. But a healthy child, for example, you certainly could not. Although what you could do would be abandon your parental responsibility and let somebody else take it over. Yeah, I think that and I think that's absolutely true. And the and the difficulty of the sort of the Rothbard situation where he's talking about what should be legal and what shouldn't be legal is you cannot legislate good parenting. 
Mm. You just can't make – no, you, you can't write things on paper and make people good parents. Yeah, I think this is a big thing here, Mark, because and, – and, and people have called in about this before and said, well, you know, what is the contract? What are the responsibilities of a parent? Look, the instant that you are putting the relationship – between two be- human beings, like, you know, the loving relationship, which one would assume, I mean, that a child came out of love. Of Let's hope that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, right. That Then you start laying down terms like contract and all this stuff. I think there is a gross misunderstanding of the human condition the mm-hmm. instant you start applying contracts to love, uh, in my opinion, or or to, to care and things like that. I, I, I don't, maybe we don't even have an answer or better terms to describe these relationships. I don't know. Um, but I think it's a, I, I agree with Rich Paul that, uh, yeah, Rothbard is pretty off base. So, uh, Rich, did you have anything else? Um, not really, but what you were saying about it, I don't think the contract is necessarily the right word, but there is certainly a, a set of responsibilities that are unique between a parent and a child. And I think those would have to be worked out over time. Um, just like all of the other finer points of the NAP. Sure, would come that's down the to non-aggression principle. And, and arbitrators and the NAP. Um, sure, yeah, I agree. It's something that has to be explored, and I think we need to explore it beyond terms that we, that maybe that we don't even have right now. Uh, because, you know, we've never really had, other than in prehistoric times maybe, we've never really had a, you know, a, a non-governmented society. Uh, and so these things deserve exploration. So, Rich, thank you very much uh, for calling in, and uh, best of luck Hang to you. Hang in there, Rich. We yeah, hope you're out soon. Thanks. So, Great talking to you guys. Likewise. You too. 855-450-3733. Uh, that's uh, the number where you can call in to talk about whatever you want to talk about. And this really is a radio show where, obviously, boy, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about, uh, clearly. So let's go ahead and that go to... That was a great the, discussion. I agree. Yeah. And it's one that deserves a lot of discussion. I have a lot of... Uh, it's, it's an idea I've been exploring quite a bit personally myself um, very recently. Mm-hmm. Because I think the idea... Me of thinking of myself as property, as in I own myself, uh, rubs me the wrong way in, in, in a very real sense. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 